The massive city of São Paulo is the commercial centre of Brazil and the heart of business is the city's stock exchange. 500 Brazilian companies are listed here and every day 500 million euro is traded. Although there is still poverty and the characteristics of a developing nation, Brazil is no third world country. Today it's one of the world's major economies and is lining up alongside China, India and Russia as one of the economic superpowers of the future. Dynamic economic growth has established Brazil as an upper middle income country. In terms of trade relations, the European Union is Brazil's biggest trading partner, taking a quarter of Brazil's exports. As Brazilian investment in the EU increases, so too does European investment in Brazil. Whether it's Nokia, Volkswagen, Telefonica or Carrefour, European brands are household names. Brazil's biggest company is Petrobras, an oil and energy corporation that's developing an international market for its innovative biofuel technologies. These days, it's not surprising to find multinational oil companies taking green energy seriously. And this is an area where Brazil has a head start. During the oil crisis in the 1970s, Brazil responded by running engines on ethanol produced from sugarcane. By the middle of the 1980s, a third of the national fleet was using ethanol as fuel. You have been using ethanol as a fuel, as a substitute for gasoline for a long time. So the company, Petrobras, and the country both have a very, very long history, a very good experience. And I would say that you are leaders in terms of biofuels. Companies like Petrobras and Brazilian car manufacturers have pioneered the use of flex fuel cars. Vehicles that can run on gasoline, alcohol or any combination of the two. Rising oil prices and concern about carbon emissions meant that in 2006, three quarters of all cars sold in Brazil were flex fuel models. People have been making alcohol from sugarcane for hundreds of years. These days, scientists are working to find the most efficient way to produce alcohol on an industrial scale testing the use of pressure, heat and microorganisms to accelerate the process. While the Brazilian biofuel industry was founded on alcohol from sugarcane, biodiesel is the new focus for developing the sector. Refined vegetable oil from plants like soya or sunflower are added to conventional diesel to produce biodiesel. Brazil has impressive plans for this new technology that are valuable for small producers and conscious of environmental issues. There's no point in producing biofuels from sources that are not sustainable. Our three biodiesel plants that are being built right now, they are close to areas that are more small farming areas. And you're going to use seeds that are more small farmer friendly. If the EU we have that ambitious agenda of moving uh, to a percentage of about 20% of renewable energies by 2020, which is very ambitious. We know that we have to import uh, from other parts of the world and Brazil will certainly uh, have, a, have a stake in our uh, energy mix in the future. The old port city of Santos still bears the hallmarks of Brazil's colonial history and links with the coffee trade. Following three centuries under Portuguese rule, Brazil became an independent nation in 1822. While the links with Portugal are obvious, in truth, there was substantial immigration here from virtually every European country. The Atlantic coastal strip became the most densely populated region of Brazil. But before the colonial period, this was the Mata Atlantica, a rainforest stretching 4,000 kilometers along the coast. Today, less than 10% of the original forest remains. Because of the number and diversity of animals and plants, it's known as one of the five areas in the world with the highest level of biodiversity. Scientists from a German research institute and the University of Sao Paulo are investigating the minimum viable area for the survival of different species. Their data will allow the identification of species under threat and strategies for conservation. We are mist netting, so capturing birds to see which species are still occurring in big fragments and in small fragments. And we are putting traps to see which small mammals are living in the forest, which species, how many species are living there. And putting camera traps to, to get also the bigger mammals. 
and this we are comparing with the availability of food for the mammals and we measure what quality of habitat we have for these animals. Many species are unique to the Mata Atlantica. For instance, there are 8,000 plant species here that don't grow anywhere else in the world. This project is an example of Brazil and Europe cooperating on an issue with global significance. It's a global issue because of different arguments, like, for example, for the climate, and uh, it's also very important for carbon fixation, and it's providing us with a lot of different um, species, maybe medicinal plants, and so we have different types of advantages if we can sustain and live together with the forest. Rio de Janeiro is one of the most spectacular cities in the world. The location, the culture and the amenities provide for a magnificent lifestyle. But if you work your way up the hill from Ipanema Beach, you'll find yourself in the favela of Rocinha. About a quarter of Brazil's population live in poverty in the shanty towns or favelas that surround Brazil's cities. Rocinha is the oldest and biggest favela in Brazil. A quarter of a million people make their life here. As so often happens worldwide, the rural poor move to the cities in search of a better life and don't find it. Reducing poverty is a government priority and recent welfare programs are targeting 35 million people caught in the poverty trap. Hosinha has a reputation for violence and drug gangs and murder is common. It's not all bad, there are also schools and clinics and everyone helps themselves to free electricity and cable TV. One of the interesting recent community initiatives is the network of internet cafes. The European Union is supporting Viva Favela, cheap internet access and education programmes. There are about 100 internet access points around the favela. Connecting with the outside world is certainly important in terms of getting information into the area, but it's equally important to get information out about what's going on here. It is no longer accurate to talk of Brazil as a country of the future. Things are happening now. It's a major industrial power, accounting for half of South America's economic activity. This places Brazil in an important leadership role in terms of regional cooperation through Mercosur. The world is watching to see if Brazil can be a stimulus for regional growth, stability and peace. We EU as the sort of world champion of, of regional integration, we, we see that as a very important export model with, with, which we would like to export to other parts of the world. And uh, Brazil is very interested in, in regional integration and uh, we just hope to, to give them part of our know-how and to, to learn from uh, Brazil as well.